Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Briggs. So this is a young adult fantasy novel that is very eerie and creepy. It's not terribly, like, scary, but it's definitely got a darker feel to it. Um, it's also kind of a slow build, and... I like, I like this story, I do, but it also took me a lot longer to read it. Like, I had to sit there and absorb it, I think, is what happened. Like, it was not a quick read. I did not zip through this. It took me a couple weeks to get through it, but it was definitely worth it. Um, so our main character, Jacob, is a 16-year-old in our modern age, um, pretty normal life. Growing up, his grandfather told him all these really strange stories about these children he grew up with in this orphanage and how they all had these very strange and peculiar powers and his grandfather had all these like pictures to show him and as a kid Jacob just ate up these stories and loved them and totally thought they were real and as he gets older he's like actually I think my grandfather's just trying to amuse a small child and maybe he's just trying to like rationalize what happened because his grandfather grew up during World War II and he actually got sent to the orphanage because his parents died at the hands of the Nazis. So Jacob's ideas about his grandfather kind of shift as he gets older and they're still close but Jacob's also kind of like okay grandfather enough is enough you can stop telling me these kids stories now I'm you know I'm 16 let's let's keep it real now. Kind of the turning event in this book is when Jacob's grandfather gets killed. And when Jacob gets to the scene, his grandfather is like breathing his last breath. And Jacob thinks he sees something. And he doesn't quite know what it is. And his grandfather's last clues lead him to this letter. And that letter then leads him to this island off the coast of Wales. And he starts thinking that maybe... His grandfather wasn't lying as he finds this orphanage and starts seeing some really strange things. And maybe some of these peculiar children might actually still be alive. And it's just a really fun story. Um, there are monsters in this book too, which I love. Yeah, it's definitely one that I had to like just kind of live in. And I loved like Jacob's thought process as he tries to rationalize these but at the same time it's like I know they're actually going to be kids there. So this book also includes photographs that are kind of woven within the story which makes it a really interesting read. Um, sometimes it worked well for the story and sometimes it didn't. It kind of depended on the photograph. Some of them I looked at and I'm like how did they do that because these are all real photographs. Um, or like, where did that photograph come from? And so I started wondering about the history of these photographs. And so I was more... Sometimes they threw them, like, kicked me out of the story while I tried to think about that. And some of them I'm like, oh, it's cool to, like... But at the same time, it's cool to, like, see these peculiar children and to see the inspiration. Um, so I have mixed feelings about the photographs in these books. <laughs> Basically, some of these are also really creepy photos and like nightmare inducing. So if that's your thing, that's also in here. Some of the photos are creepier than others. Just saying. I love getting to see and know each of the peculiar children and what their powers were and how they worked into the story and like what their histories were, why they're at this orphanage. Um definitely interested in who Miss Peregrine was and like why she even founded this orphanage for strange children. So I am like super excited to find out what happens next in the series and to grab the next two books. Um, but I'm also not rushed to do it either because it took me so long to get through this first book. And that makes, makes any sense? Like I loved it and it's fantastic. But I'm not like, oh my goodness, I need book two right now. I think this is pretty solidly four stars. It's awesome. It's amazing. But I don't really feel an urgency with it. Um, there are monsters and there's action sequences, um, but it's...
strange. Strange book, that's what it is. Okay, so this is a book that I definitely like, I feel like I want to talk more about, but I don't want to spoil it for you. I liked discovering everything with Jacob and not really knowing what was happening. Um, so if you haven't read this book yet, you should totally check it out first and then, then you can come back and watch it. If you have read this book yet, spoilers, nothing but spoilers, and let's go. So the kids are trapped in this time loop where they're repeating the same day over and over and over again. So like the whole world is aging without them. So like Jacob is from their future timeline um, and they would all be like 80 something. And if they ever leave the loop for too long, they will age to 80 and possibly just like crumble and die. Um, so that's interesting and a really unique like look at this world. I love the aspect that they can go time travel, that they're in 1940 and like the world that Jacob is walking into is the 40s. Oh. And I also like the fact that they could, if they found the right loop, they could get to a different time period. And so I'm excited for like the next book to see like where the other loops are and what their days repeating are and what the experiences of the people who are in those loops are like. Um, so I am really fascinated by this time travel aspect. Um, it's also cool, like, with the loop repeating itself. Like, it's the same day for everybody else in the town. So, like, I think it's Milliard is doing a, a survey of what a day is like in every single person in the town's life. And, like, he's mapped it out and knows exactly what's going to happen when. Which is kind of cool, but it would also get really boring if you had to relive the same day over and over for like 60 years. Um, so I get the kids' desire. It's like, oh my goodness, there's something new and we get to leave. It's also cool because the kids are still like physically the age they are. And they've kind of got this arrested development thing going on where they're not really growing up. But at the same time, they have lived 60 years in this loop or whatever. So it's very... Gosh, I think it's more like 70 years in that loop. Ooh. So they have lived like this immense amount of time in this loop over and over. So they are a bit wiser than your average 10 year old, but they're also still not like fully adults yet either. And it's kind of an interesting mix. And like, they're never going to get to be actual adults either. And it's also a bit weird that Jacob is dating his grandfather's ex-girlfriend. It's kind of weird. Like Emma was dating Abe and now she's like, dating Jacob and it's strange but at the same time like they fit and there's no reason why they shouldn't be together other than the fact that she used to date Abe. Um, so I have mixed feelings about that relationship. Like I love Emma as a character um, and there's definitely chemistry between the two of them, her and Jacob. I don't know. It could be good for her to move on behind, beyond, beyond Abe. I love all the kids on like their powers. So we've got Emma with the flame and Millard who's invisible, although it kind of creeps me out because it means that he's walking around without clothes on all the time. Just like, dude, like people, like Jacob sits on him at one point. Millard's not wearing any clothes. You just sat on a naked boy and that's kind of gross and creepy. Um, <laughs> ugh. Um, we've got the girl that can like float and just, that sounds awesome. Enoch creeps me out the most, I think, because he can bring things back to life. Um, and it's kind of cute and cool when he's bringing, like, these clay creatures to life that, like, didn't have pasts. But, like, bringing back somebody who already died, and especially someone who's experienced a traumatic death, um, that was just really weird and really gross and bleh. And then there's the girl with, like, the extra head mouth in the back of her head, which is so weird. That one creeped me out too. Um, it's like she looks normal from the front too. So like she can't use her mouth in the front. Does the mouth in the front not move? Like I'm a little confused by that. So there are definitely some creepy aspects to this book and these characters. So we've also got the monsters in here, the hollows and the whites. And just, they're very creepy and very spooky and I would not really want to run into them. Um, yeah, I don't know which creeps me out more, the ones that are, like, fully monstrous, or the people who are kind of normal and could pass as normal human beings, 
And I feel like that's what they should be doing, not helping the evil bad guys. Um, they're both bad. And their symbiotic relationship is not good. And experimenting with time loops and trying to create immortality is not great either. Miss Peregrine and the other birds are also interesting because they're the only ones that can create time loops. And they've also kind of dedicated themselves to protecting these children. Um, and so I get her trying to protect them, but at the same time, like, they aren't... They've been kids for so long that are they really kids anymore? And shouldn't they be allowed to make their own choices and have their own say? It's an interesting relationship and, like, she's cool, but I'm not sure that I agree with her 100% on, like, every action she does. It's really cool to think about, like, what the other loops are where they lead and how they like communicate with each other because apparently they can do some of that. Finding out about Jacob's grandfather and his whole past was just like, he's out there fighting monsters and that's really cool. Um, but he also couldn't tell his family about that. So his family doesn't like trust him. And it's kind of strange. And I feel kind of bad for Abe at the end of the book. But also, like, he made his decisions and he knew what he was doing. At the end of the book where Jacob tries to tell his dad, like, what's happening and that, like, his imaginary friends are real was really, like, a funny scene, especially when Emma and Millard and them show up and they're like, his dad thinks he's dreaming. And it's like, and it's going to be so bad when he wakes up and be like, wait, wait, you mean that wasn't a dream? Like, what is going on, Jacob? What, what, where's Jacob? Um, I feel kind of bad for him, but at the same time, like, Jacob had to go. There's a lot going on in this book, and I definitely love the ride. And I'm sure I had way more feels during this book that I can't remember now. Um, it's awesome. So, peace out. I love you guys. And keep reading. Go check out this book. And peace out.